Uh, welcome to the Farm to Fork thematic session. Um, I'm Rebecca Grossberg. I'm a project officer at the Interreg NWE Joint Secretariat. I'll be your moderator. Um, so you'll just have to listen to me a little bit. Um, let's just see if anybody else has joined. Okay, let, I'll just start with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so as I said about five times already, please keep your mic muted and your camera off. Um, please rename yourself. Uh, to do so, you need to um, go into, into the, um, yeah, you have to go down the bottom and you'll click on the button, participant button, and you'll see rename. Um, this will just allow us to identify everybody um, to know who's speaking, especially in the breakout sessions and also when you're asking questions. Um, once again, just keep your, mute, my, your mic muted and your camera off. Um, it'll make it easier for everybody. Let's see how many people we have, we have 62 people. Um, please ask questions. We want you to ask questions. Um, use the chat at the bottom. Um, it's set default to send questions to everyone. So if you have specific issues, uh, please send a message to technical support one or technical support two only. Um, we, we will be um, checking the chat for questions and there will be a question and answer session at the end. Now, this is the agenda. So first we'll look at farm and fork, how they're addressed in the current program. We'll have presentations from two projects, IDEA and Fabulous Farmers. And then we'll wrap up with what's, what uh, agro-food will look like in the new program. And that will be followed by two breakout sessions of 25 minutes. Um, after this session is done, um, after you've heard all of the presentations before the breakout sessions, I'll tell you how to get into the breakout sessions. And just as a reminder again, mics off, cameras off, use the chat function for questions. Thank you, um, Inga. First speaker is my colleague Inga. I am gonna stop sharing and I will let her share her presentation. Um, so today, hello again to everyone. Uh, so today I will provide you with an overview of some key figures and information about the projects uh, of the current program that are dealing with the topic that actually is very broad uh, related to agriculture and, uh, and food. So many of our projects are represented now as uh, taking part in, uh, in this thematic session. So welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you for offering yourself as a host of a breakout session. Many of you signed up for that. Um, unfortunately, we had to make a selection because we, we can host only four sessions. So I really uh, encourage everyone uh, to take actively part in the breakout sessions uh, later on. Um, but yeah, let's go back to our projects. Um, so we have selected or we have considered 12 projects as uh, being part of uh, the Farm to Folk uh, session. Um, they focus in some ways, in different ways from on the shift from a linear agro-system to circular agro-ecosystem. Uh, they want to optimize the use and reuse of natural resources. Uh, become less dependent on exhaustible external inputs, reduce food waste, increase the greenhouse gas emissions in agriculture. So really they are very, very good. Um, so the 12 implementing partnerships count all together around uh, 130 partners. And the projects are worth altogether uh, 31 and a half million of uh, indirect funding, which corresponds to over 52 million euro of uh, project budget altogether. So uh, um, what are the frameworks for action where the projects could fit in currently? Uh, so first of all, the European Green Deal, as you may remember, it was published first in December 2019. Um, our projects also contribute to the EU 2020 strategy for sustainable growth to the EU action plan for a circular economy. And uh, when it comes to, um, to the global level, let's say, when it's about global level projects uh, contribute to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 12, which is the one uh, 
that aims to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Um, while at project level, as a, a program level, sorry, as I already said, our projects are very diverse. Uh, they either uh, fall under innovation or focus on our second priority related to low carbon, carbon or uh, resources and materials efficiency, uh, which is our third priority. Um, so this slide gives um, an overview of what our projects are and look like. Uh, so just to pick two examples, Smite Control is a project that focuses on pest management programs to control poultry red mite infestations. Another one could be Food Heroes, materials and resources efficiency that uh, aims to reduce food waste in the first parts of the food chain. And in this way, it wants to enhance the more efficient use of resources and a circular economy in Northeast Europe. And um, just to dive in a bit in uh, two other projects, uh, one of them I, I picked up called Happy Moo, Happy Moo project, an innovation project um, focusing on the delivery of tools to monitor uh, cow's welfare, uh, so to protect cows uh, from diseases, hunger, and stress by using uh, the milk mid infrared composition. So in this way, the project goes beyond the usual criteria relating to the cow shed environment. Uh, the partnership is quite big, 13 partners. It covers nearly the whole of Northwestern Europe. Uh, lead partner is Belgium. And the project will continue running until uh, the end of next year. Uh, just another example of a project. This, this time I picked one. Uh, it focuses on low carbon. Uh, I care for farms. So my partnership is a bit smaller, nine partners. Again, a Belgian lead partner, but that's just by case, it's not uh, on purpose, sorry. Uh, and so the aim of this project is to increase the use of solar thermal energy in farming in Northwest European regions. Um, for this, um, uh, yeah, and, and in this way to decrease the greenhouse gas emissions in agriculture. And the aim of the project is to do this, uh, so to save nearly 500 tons of CO2 a year by means of a project. So this was really in a glance, uh, at a glance, uh, what our projects of the current program are um, dealing with. Um, so Rebecca. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Inga, you very much. Thank you very much. Please um, don't forget to put questions in the chat. Um, now, um, we will be hearing from two projects that we're currently supporting. Um, we'll hear from the IDEA project, Implementation Development of Economic Viable Algae-Based Value Chains. So that's Ian Bastions. And then we'll hear from Fabulous Farmers. Good morning. Great. The slides are visible? It's perfect. Thank you. Okay. You Good morning, it's my pleasure to share with you the aims and some results of the IDEA project. Uh, I'm Lynn Bastians, a project coordinator, and I'm active at FITO. This is a research institute in Belgium for applied research. IDEA is about algae value chains. And as indicated in the infographic on the slide, this comprises the production of the algae biomass, as well as the processing and the formulation uh, in products. IDEA is addressing the challenge uh, for the need for, for uh, more renew renewable and sustainable resources, not only because consumers are more interested in healthy food and feed, but also to replace compounds such as antibiotics and important proteins. And algae do have that potential uh, for uh, as renewable resource because they are a type of plants that can convert CO2, light and nutrients in a complex biomass that comprises multiple valuable and healthy compounds. Unfortunately, the algae value chains are not yet fully developed in Northwest Europe, maybe with the exceptions towards the aquaculture. Another challenge IDEA is addressing is uh, the need for innovation in the primary sectors, for instance, for the empty greenhouses. So why are we addressing this topic on Northwest Euro Europe level? This is mainly justified by the climate that is significantly different in Northwest Europe compared to other parts uh, of Europe. And that's why in Northwest Europe, we may require other approaches, other algae species and other growth systems than in the other parts of Europe. 
and it makes also sense to go abroad uh, the country uh, boundaries not only to exchange information uh, between algae growers that cultivate their algae in the same climate, but also towards a centralized biomass processing. And in Europe, there are uh, empty greenhouses um, and they offer potential for the year round cultivation um, due to cheaper production elsewhere, for instance, in outdoor systems. IDEA focuses on closed bioreactor systems and targeted higher value compounds to make the value chain more economic viable. And in Northwest Europe, we do have relevant knowledge and infrastructure. So that's why we did a project on Northwest Europe level. IDEA stands for Implementation Development of Economic Viable Algae Based Value Chains in Northwest Europe. That's also the main objective. And the sub objectives are year-round cultivation in an economic and sustainable way, the processing of the algae biomass into marketable compounds, to propose uh, an algae value chain implementation plan, and to initiate activities for long-term impact. To this end, we brought together a consortium of eight full partners and two associated partners from five countries. Uh, and this is uh, collaborating since 2017 within the IDEA project. Currently, we are finalizing the project. And meanwhile, we are also starting a capitalization uh, part that has been approved and where four additional partners joined our, our consortium. So let's have a closer look at the LG value chain and the associated challenges. So at the algae farm, there the algae farmer needs to select or choose the strain, the algae strain to grow, grow it en masse, and then harvest it. And the algae farms, they're always looking for a downstream market. And this is challenging, especially because nowadays the, the amounts of algae that are produced on the farm are relatively slow. And algae farmers are aware that larger amounts are required to... Um, to initiate, let's say, a production downstream uh, of, of algae, of compounds, of products that con contain the algae compounds. And for this, upscaling is required. And as it is associated with some technical challenges, but also sustainability aspects like medium reuse and the CO2 source become more important. On the other end of the value chain, there are the formulating industry, and they can use algae biomass in as ingredients for their products. Of course, for each ingredient, what they need is uh, that they can be ensured that the supply of sufficient amounts of stable quality algae biomass and fractions is available, and this at competing prices. And this is challenging for new value chains. And we, we noticed that um, at the formulating industry, that it's not always easy for them to express the specific specs of, of the compounds of the ingredients that they need. And this combined with the fact that starting algae farmers may not know the full potential of uh, their algae biomass, it is challenging to link offer and demand of uh, algae biomass in the value chain. The processing industry is situated in the middle of the algae value chain and actually bridges between the algae farmers and the processing industry. And their main task is to tailor the biomass towards the specs of of the formulators. And we have to consider that this is a sector in development. The whole value chain needs to be economic viable, also a challenge. And it can only be unrolled a value chain when every chain is in place, so every part is in place and is connected well. And what we um, noticed is that applications can be the driver of the whole value chain. Once it is known a product a uh, specific ingredient, this is required, then it's clear to the algae farmer, this is what I have to grow, the processing industry, they know how to process it and so on. Of course, to come to that point, we have to start with cultivating algae biomass in sufficient amounts so that we can do application tests and test some formulations to come to this accepted products. And this is exactly where IDEA uh, contributes. In the next five more minutes. Yes, in the next slides, I will uh, show you some highlights and I refer to our idea webinar that will be organized uh, July 6th for more details. Uh, more the, de the details of this event are on the idea website. So the first sub objective was year round LG production in Northwest Europe and there 
uh, the IDEA consortium looked at algae that are adapted to the Northwest Europe climate, especially for the dark and colder periods. And with the algae that were selected, a year round production uh, on, at pilot scale was realized and so some sustainability aspects were considered. More specifically for the algae cultivation, IDEA made use of existing pilot infrastructure. So at Forschungszentrum Jülich in Germany, there are green walls and feedbacks. In Belgium, there is a pilot system with tubular bioreactors. And at each of this site, the year-round cultivation was approached a little bit differently. In Germany, we, we used uh, or are using a mixed culture that changes composition in function of the season. While in the Belgian site, a set of pure cultures uh, is being used that is being altered throughout the seasons. In respect to sustainability, we noticed that water and medium reuse is very important because at harvest time, only a few grams per liter of the algae uh, is, is there, all the other is water. So more than 90-90% of, of the culture needs to be removed. And for that, we use a membrane algae filtration unit uh, developed at Vito that is able to concentrate the algae more than 20 times and hereby recycling more than 95 of the medium percent of the medium. On the other hand, we have the CO2 capture technology from the University of Twente. So the idea here is to capture CO2 from the air and inject it into the algae bioreactors. Both approaches have been demonstrated within the project in the pilot facilities that were mentioned. The second sub-objective was uh, processing of the algae biomass to marketable compounds, and there quite some attention was paid to the preservation of the algae right after the harvest at the algae farm, before it is fractionated and formulated. This wet preservation, so we focused on wet preservation of the pre-concentrated algae at the algae farm in storage vessels, as is indicated here in the picture. Um, and research revealed that healthy cultures can be kept there at eight degrees up to one week. And this is more than sufficient time to collect the algae to process it at the algae farm, or as is indicated in the schematic figure there, to collect it and uh, transport it to a centralized processing unit. And there we have the similarities actually with the milking industry. Once we have the biomass, then it needs to be processed towards applications and cosmetics, feed and food are the applications IDEA was targeting. Whole biomass created, uh, disrupted or not disrupted, created via the short value chain was considered for some applications, also fractionation and purification. So the long value chain uh, was required. And here are some samples, examples for the long value chain. So we preferred a rather simple one, where we extracted the oil for the cosmetic applications and the defatted remaining biomass towards the feed applications. For some of the algaes, for instance, here indicated the porphyridium, we went more in depth to extract also the colorants and so on. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to ask you to wrap up. Yes. So for the applications, we, um, a funneled approach was used uh, to come to two formulations that were tested in real life. So more than 50 uh, biomass fractions were screened at lab scale, composition, technical functionality, bioactivity. The selection was then formulated and a few were tested in real life. So via animal trials and uh, taste panels. And here you can see the products we came up with. So two promising uh, dog uh, snacks and dog food, health promoting, important. So a skincare product, some food products, and we have a chicken feed that we plan a trial with in collaboration with Felgeris. And towards the long-term effect, we come to the capitalization part where we extend the scope of idea uh, uh, to use, let's say, side streams to improve the economics for the algae farmers. So we will be using uh, reused CO2 nutrients from digesters and so on. And on the application side, we uh, enlarged or, or widened uh, to the application of crop protection. And with this, I would like to acknowledge the consortium and of course, INDREG, Northwest Europe. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Um, if you have any questions about the IDEA project, please put them in the chat. Uh, we'll be checking the chat. Um, and if you can stop sharing your screen, please. Now we will hear from Bart. Skalkins 
from fa the Fabulous Farmers Project. Um, once again, please put your questions in the chat. Um, thank you, Bart, you have 10 minutes. Okay, uh, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, so I am Bart Hawkins and I'm the project coordinator of uh, Fabulous uh, Farmers, uh, a project um, that is uh, running in uh, uh, six lands now. We started with uh, five countries and in the capitalization, we had a new partner um, from uh, an additional country. So, um, Agriculture uh, faces uh, a lot of uh, challenges and a couple of them are that uh, we have to tackle climate uh, change and uh, also we are asked to deliver more and better equal system services. So um, in this project, we want uh, to improve resource efficiency by better uh, water management and improved soil quality by using Using functional agrobiodiversity. And then it's important to know what functional agrobiodiversity is. Uh, it is the targeted stimulation of biodiversity to deliver ecosystem services such as pest and disease control, pollination, soil, and water quality. So when we look at uh, the current situation of agriculture in uh, Northwest uh, Europe, um, we look at an ag agro ecosystem that uh, delivers quite some food and feed, but to do so, uh, it needs uh, a lot of external exhaustible inputs, such as uh, fossil fuels, pesticides, mineral fertilizers, and so on and so on. But this uh, system, besides uh, food and feed, uh, gives also some positive uh, externalities, uh, public goods, and, but in the current situation, uh, also quite some negative externalities, uh, uh, such as uh, waste products, emissions, uh, greenhouse gases, um, and so on and so on. So we have a system that has a high production, but also a strong dependency on ex external inputs and negative effects on the quality of natural resources, uh, such as uh, soil, water, biodiversity. The aim uh, of what we uh, want to do is that uh, we have more positive uh, external lattice, um, and uh, these uh, uh, positive effects should be uh, caused by uh, FAP, by uh, the functional agrobiodiversity. So we uh, aim to get a more robust uh, system uh, that optimizes the reuse of natural resources and is less dependent of uh, the exhaustible external inputs whilst delivering benefits to farmers society and also environment. So uh, the project objective, um, yeah, you can uh, read it, but we want to accelerate uh, the implementation of a functional agrobiodiversity um, and come to a more circular uh, agricultural uh, ecosystem. Um, by doing this, we think uh, agriculture becomes also uh, more climate uh, robust. And uh, some of the outputs uh, of our projects or a FAP sol uh, solution toolkit. So it's important that uh, farmers know uh, what uh, FAP solutions they can use. And this toolkit uh, helps them to uh, make uh, a good uh, choice. At the end of the project, we also want to have a self-sustainable Northwest Europe-wide FAP learning network. Uh, we see that uh, some regions are good in uh, one uh, system, other regions are good in another system. And we want to establish a system where farmers uh, can keep on learning from uh, one another uh, also uh, after the project uh, ends. And of course, we want to reduce the external inputs by an average uh, of 30%. Uh, that's our uh, aim. So what did we achieve uh, up to now? 
Um, first of all, we have a review of the current metrics and indicators for monitoring envi environmental performance of FAP measures. This is very important because um, yeah, a lot of people and a lot of institutions uh, claimed, yeah, FAP is very interesting, but um, when you ask uh, figures, um, yeah, then it becomes more difficult. So this uh, review of uh, these metrics is very important uh, to give proof of uh, the effects of, of uh, FAP measures. Then uh, we established uh, 12 local FAP learning networks where 10 FAP solutions are tested. And uh, every uh, of these FAP learning networks um, made a FAP action plan. So they said, okay, we will work on this and on that. Um, and also a FAP landscape integration plan. Because agriculture is um, part of uh, the complete environment, and uh, it's very important to see that uh, the measures you want to uh, do in a certain area uh, fit into uh, a landscape and or seen as a, a whole system together with the landscape surrounding this uh, agriculture. Then uh, we also uh, established uh, a EU, EU policy paper and uh, we, last week we had uh, a EU policy event. Um, since FAP is uh, still not completely ac accepted uh, in the agricultural world, uh, uh, it was very important to be able to give this uh, message uh, during the Green Week. Um, and we think uh, quite some of our recommendations are picked up by uh, the European uh, yeah, DG Agri. And uh, now we want to translate uh, this general message uh, also to uh, the local participating uh, countries. Um, and uh, yeah, we aim to, uh, at the end of the pro uh, project, to have more than 300 farms participating. At this time, we already are supporting 100 farmers uh, for implementing uh, FAP measures. At the end uh, of the project, as said already, we want uh, to have tested 10 FAP solutions in 12 regions. Uh, in France, the Netherlands, the UK, Belgium, and uh, Luxembourg, and uh, 315 farmers uh, and 25,000 hectares uh, covered uh, by uh, FAP uh, measures. Um, we want to have um, a second version of the FAP action plan, um, and then uh, we want to. Uh, get this 30% uh, decreased uh, chemical input uh, in the agricultural uh, system. And um, yeah, the policy paper I also mentioned uh, already. So uh, we also had to tackle uh, some problems. Um, and uh, one of the uh, unforeseen uh, things uh, is that uh, quite some farms uh, want to participate in these uh, projects and want to test uh, FAP measures, but they are not participating as a whole. And um, yeah, uh, for um, the results, this is a little bit uh, problematic. It gives some fragmented results. And uh, we found a solution for that by working with file diaries, uh, where we collect uh, the figures for separate uh, yeah, uh, acres. And there, uh, like this, we can work uh, further on it. The second problem is a little bit related on that. Um, in practice, uh, it's quite impossible to have uh, a monitoring with uh, one European lab so uh, that you uh, get uh, nice and clear uh, results. So um, we work with different uh, labs and um, by that the results we will have will be contextual for each uh, region. Um, but 
At the other hand, we will uh, have uh, overall trends and uh, results uh, over the whole project uh, region. All right, I'm going to have to ask you to, to wrap it up. You have two more minutes. Okay. Um, so um, an important thing is uh, that we want to create uh, extra economic incentives uh, for farmers and that we uh, can do by the capitalization uh, work package. And um, yeah, uh, policy gives uh, possibilities uh, to do that. So in the capitalization project, um, we will develop a digital marketplace concept for fab ecosystems. Um, while we see that the benefits of uh, FAP measures uh, only come in the long term. Um, and we want to uh, speed up that by uh, making uh, a kind of uh, uh, platform where we can sell a kind of uh, eco uh, credits, uh, FAP credits uh, to the market. So, um, yeah, um, to uh, finish, um, yeah, in the capitalization, uh, we added Germany uh, and South, uh, and they have a lot of experience on this platform working. And uh, for example, uh, the Netherlands have a lot of uh, uh, experience in flower strips, and so we are um, yeah, uh, helping one another and speeding up uh, uh, the whole process. Um, and. I think we have a real strong partnership and we would like to continue working uh, with it uh, in the future. So Rebecca, I will end here. Uh, my last slide was here, so um, uh, the floor is uh, back to you. Thank you very much, um, Talene and Bart. Very interesting presentations of current projects. Mar Bart, if you can stop sharing your screen, please. Um, now, uh, please don't forget to ask questions. We've only had one question so far. Oh, no, we have two questions. Great. Thank you. Please keep the questions coming. Um, we want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, next, I would like to introduce Julia Eripre, um, who is the head of unit. Julia, put it in slideshow mode, please. There you go. OK, Julia. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Julia Eripre. Um, we're working in Lille at the Joint Secretariat. Uh, Rebecca and Inge are in my team. Uh, so you, you know them already. Um, so my role today is to provide you uh, with a quick overview of how the theme of uh, sustainable food systems could be tackled in the 21-27 uh, programming period. Uh, of course, as Terence Lecoq said this morning, uh, everything is still under discussion and discussions are very long, <laughs> uh, but I can already give you some hints about the, the future. So as you see, the topic is very large. You, you've seen the variety of projects already uh, this morning in the earlier presentations. Um, and hence, you, you'll see that a number of priorities uh, from the next program would be appropriate um, for you. Um, as Inge already mentioned in her presentation, uh, a healthier and more sustainable EU food system is a cornerstone of the European uh, Green Deal. Um, a smart and just energy transition is a major challenge for Northwest Europe and will be part of the green pillar of the next program. Uh, so priority two uh, aims to boost the implementation of energy transition policies. And the priority is structured around uh, two two specific objectives, energy efficiency, the first one, and renewable energy. And under this SO 2.2, so SO stands for specific objectives, sorry about the jargon. Um, under this SO 2.2, agrofood is mentioned twice. For example, under training schemes in rural, urban, and intermediate areas for the uh, production of energy, um, renewable energy and management. Uh, for example, the use of agri-food waste byproducts for energy production through methanization or other techniques. So that's one example. Um, 
transition toward the place-based circular economy is another challenge for Northwest Europe, and this is priority three of the next program. It aims to boost the implementation of circular uh, transition policies. Here again, the agro-food sector is mentioned several times. Uh, stakeholders will be encouraged to adopt innovative solutions for supporting the transition to circular economies. Uh, so, for example, rethinking planning production service delivery processes in sectors such as uh, building, manufacturing or agro-food to achieve uh, circularity again. Um, then uh, we could also envisage uh, actions under priority four. There is a need to tackle territorial disparities in North East Europe by building territorial resilience. Uh, so innovation shall be an enabler here for balanced territorial development and territorial uh, resilience. So in this priority, actors from the public, uh, the private sector, research, civil society will cooperate to find solutions to territorial challenges. And I would say that sustainable food systems could definitely be an angle here uh, to tackle those, those issues. Um, so this transition uh, shall occur by involving different stakeholders through multi-level governance models. Uh, we aim to increase the stakeholder capacity to demonstrate and implement new or innovative integrated solutions. And in the next programs, um, citizens and communities will definitely be at the heart of the program approach, will, which also means that the program will favor projects looking at the, the diffusion and the adoption of solutions rather than on pure uh, technological uh, development, which is a, a bit new compared to the, the current program. So really, we're looking at the diffusion and ad adoption of existing solutions. I, I want to insist on that. Um, future cooperation projects um, shall be implemented through um, sorry. I have a, someone trying to call me. <laughs> That's very interesting. Uh, future cooperation projects shall be implemented through at least one of the following categories of project activities. Um, so elaboration and implementation of joint strategies or action plans, uh, pilot actions for testing tools, solutions, uh, uh, upscaled, and capacity building and awareness raising activities. So you can either choose one of those activities or combine everything in one project. And I want also to say that we will still finance investments in infrastructure and equipment uh, in the next program. Um, so you've seen the, the themes, you've seen the types of activities, you see the variety uh, of, of what is offered, so you can really fit into all those uh, different priorities. Um, um, so the next steps for you is, of course, to start networking, and this will be uh, very soon now in the breakout sessions. Um, start thinking of how you can contribute with your ideas, with your expertise, your experience, uh, already may maybe with Interreg or other programs. And uh, please, please start preparing for the first call for proposals, which uh, could be launched um, if we are not too late uh, around spring next year. Um, yes, and follow all the, all the news on also Europe, and we hope we can have uh, physical events in the coming months uh, that it's uh, yeah a bit better, easier to network and to to build your your project application forms. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Julia, and thank you to all of our speakers. Um, so now it's time for question and answers. We have uh, let's see, we have six minutes before the breakout session, so we have about five minutes for question and answers because I'll need a few, I'll need a minute to explain how the breakout sessions work. Um, Bart has already answered a couple of questions in the chat. Um, let's see, let's start with, uh, how do you manage food waste with farmers? I think this is a question for Bart. Um, yeah, food waste is not exactly uh, the subject uh, of our uh, project. Um, we know this is a very, 
a huge uh, problem. But I think there uh, isn't it in Food Heroes uh, that is worked uh, on this uh, on this aspect uh, of uh, food waste because I thought it was over thirty percent of all produced food uh, that actually not is. Uh, being consumed but i think uh, there's another indirect project um, and it might be for the food heroes where they work on the diminution uh, diminution of uh, food waste okay thank you um wait let's see um lynn how what can you tell us about your transnational experience your transnational cooperation experience i i think uh, it's it's mainly inspiring uh, because there are more opinions. Um, yeah, you, you have more approaches that are different in the different countries. So I think it, it's good. It was also challenging because we had to exchange a lot of biomass across boundary and with COVID, this was challenging. Some questions about the future. Is R&D included in the list of activities? And another question about the future with the calls in spring be two steps. Julia, would you like to answer those? Um, yeah, the first question, I would say R&D could be uh, embedded in, in projects in the future, but as I said, we will really favor existing uh, solutions, innovations uh, to, to be able to, yeah, to diffuse them and make them uh, more available in certain territories. So really, it's really about spreading, spreading what is already there. Um, and the second second question about the, the two steps. Um, yeah, we have reviewed our current uh, system uh, application process. And uh, the conclusion is that we will keep the two steps, but uh, we will make uh, adjustments uh, to this. And this is still under discussion. Um, so we would go, yeah, for I think a more, more efficient uh, system uh, but we, we keep the first step um, uh, where you have a first decision on your, on your project because we think uh, and we, we know that applicants really need some feedback early in the process uh, about their, their ideas. So yes, two steps, but with some adjustments to be known very soon. So thank you to everyone for taking part in our event. We hope that it was interesting and fruitful that you've made some interesting contacts, heard some interesting ideas, um, and that you've learned about the future program. Um, to learn about what we've done so far, what the NWE program has done in this program period, you can look at our latest publication. Um, you can learn about the impact of our projects. Um, you can also visit our website to learn more about the future program which is still in development. There are a lot of decisions that have already been made, but more decisions being made every day. Um, and finally, if you have any questions, um, you can contact us via any of these, um, these means. You can also contact the Secretariat directly, um, contact the contact points, the national contact points. And um, you know, if there are any last minute questions, now is the time, otherwise, um, Thank you. And thank you to all of my colleagues and to all the speakers. And with that, um, have a nice afternoon. Thank and you, Rebecca. I'll see everybody in person in some near future. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.